Hey, before I begin to this Sunday's lesson, I want to remind you that if you're enjoying these videos, if you're liking the Sunday School lessons, please make sure you click like down at the bottom. If you have questions, put any questions down in the comments. And make sure you just subscribe to the videos so that way you won't miss any. <laughs> now let's start. Good morning and welcome to Sunday School with Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Troy Roland, and today we are going to be talking about a regal response to holy light. A regal response to holy light. Before we begin, let's start off with a word of prayer. Our most precious and loving Heavenly Father, we call upon you this morning, Lord, to open our minds, our hearts, our ears, and our souls, Lord, to your word. May it be placed within us, Father, and, and burn within our spirits so that we may share it, Father, and live it with everyone that we come in contact with. It's in Jesus' name, Lord, that we pray and we thank you. Amen. 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 A regal response to holy light. I promise not to keep you long today. Uh, I want this lesson to be short. So I'm going to start off with the, uh, with the end focus. And it's an interesting one. So please pay attention. Rather than exchanging gifts, Kathy's family went on a Christmas tour of the Holy Lands beginning in Egypt. They did all the touristy things, seeing the Great Pyramids, sailing up the Nile River, and even going, getting on camels for pictures. Their tour guide focused on the time the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, but Kathy was thinking about Mary, Joseph, and young Jesus, seeking sanctuary where here while King Herod was carrying out his plan to murder any potential rival king. Hmm. Kathy followed the tour guide through a market teeming with brown and black people, some matching her own skin tone. She thought that White people often portrayed in Bible art would surely stand out in the crowd like this. A more historically accurate portrayal of the Holy Family would blend right in here in Mother Africa. Kathy's son, Stephen, had begun saying that Jesus was only for white people. Not only was Jesus first imposed on us by slave owners, Stephen would say, he also didn't seem to care about black issues like police brutality, colorism, or badly funded schools. Here in Egypt, though, Kathy could see that idea was wrong. Jesus was no white savior. He was everyone's savior. That night, she shared her photos and thoughts with Stephen. Kathy's trip to Egypt and Israel made her feel even closer to Jesus. The questions for today are, what happens when we view historic happenings through only one cultural lens. The second question says, how do we make sure we are not blind to the unique perspectives of other cultures' issues? Hmm. Two good questions for today. Today we're going to be coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, starting at verse 7 and going down to verse 15. Matthew chapter 2, starting at verse 7, and going down to verse 15. I told you I'm not going to keep you long today. <laughs> verse 7 says, Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. We're talking about the wise men that had come from the Far East to come and see the new king. Verse 8 says, Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him... Come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. <laughs> now, I don't know how many people know the story of what Herod was doing at the, at the appropriate, at this particular time. I'm going to get it right here in a minute. But Herod had killed pretty much everybody in his bloodline to make sure that nobody could take the throne from him. This is a devious joker, but he was also deadly and, and homicidal, it seems like. So he actually tells these wise men and remember there is no number for the wise men, only a number of the gifts. Uh, <laughs> he actually tells the wise men that go find the baby and come back and tell me about it. Because of course he didn't have any good intentions. Hmm. Verse nine, after this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the East guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. Verse 10, 
When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. <laughs> Verse 11. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Doesn't say how many wise men there were. And to be absolutely honest, any wise men that would have been traveling at this time, especially from the Far East, they would have gone with an entire entourage anyway. And just think about it. Three wise men, would they really have been enough to carry gold in the amounts that they would have been carrying? Gold is heavy. If I was a wise man, I was leading an entourage. Catch me carrying my own gold. Let me quit. <laughs> <laughs> So they entered the house and they saw the child. That's the other thing I want you to recognize in this. It says child. It doesn't say infant. It doesn't matter which version you look at. It does not say infant. It says child. And for men to have traveled from the far east would have been a, a extreme distance. So in order for them to have traveled anywhere, it would have taken some time. So we're not talking about the infant Jesus that the, uh, the shepherds in the field were told about. We're talking about a child at this point. And a child could have been anywhere from two to five. Who knows? Nobody knows how old Jesus was at this time. But he would have been older than an infant. So just remember that. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. See, God knew what Herod was up to. So he told them to go some other way to get back home. Don't go back and tell them. Verse 13, after the wise men were gone and, and the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said, stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. See, there it is right there, big and bright as day. God knew what Herod was up to and he sent Jesus with his family away. He sent the wise men in another direction, too. Because Herod, Herod would have killed him and given him the chance. Verse 14. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother. Verse 15. And they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. I called my son out of Egypt. And that was Matthew second chapter, verses seven through 15. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to wish you all a Merry Christmas. And I'm going to take just that last little verse. I called my son out of Egypt. And I'm going to say, without spoiling my New Year sermon, I'm going to say <laughs> that there's an, an Egypt that a lot of people are in. And it's Egypt is a, a very dry land. Uh, I took a trip once while I was still an active duty soldier and we drove from, from Egypt to Israel. And the difference between those two countries is, is extreme. Egypt was dry and sandy and Israel was green and lush. It's a strange thing to see. So, going back to our in focus, we had talked about everybody in this time period and from Egypt and Israel were from Africa, which is where you find these countries. Mother Africa. We have a lot of people still living in Egypt. They think that only their way is the right way. They think that only what they do is right. They think that their skin color gives them priority or whatever the case it is. And that anybody else that isn't of their skin color is lower than them. I'm going to remind you just once that God said to love all men. It didn't say who. It doesn't specify 
in the Bible at all. Who to love? It says to love all men as he loves us. Don't let your thoughts, what you've learned, what's been engraved in you, make you look down on anybody else because they don't look like you. This is a good season to get yourself right. It's a good season to quit looking at other people and, and seeing them in their own states. Whether that be a state of color, a state of condition, a state of odor, a state of their, their household or their non-household. This is a season for you to actually care, regardless of who it is. So I'm going to implore you to step back, read the Bible for yourself, see if I'm lying, but step back for yourself and see who God tells us to love commands that we love because it is a commandment believe it or not I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and I pray you have a wonderful new year may God keep you and bless you this day and always may he always wrap his loving arms around you and keep you within his reach in Jesus name